Quick disclaimer, this video is 100% fact and everything I say is correct. You're wrong if you disagree. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, Ochido, right there. So at the bottom of D tier, we have Angry Pug. A while ago, a friend recommended that I watch Angry Pug. He's like, oh, he's such a great streamer. He's one of my favorites, blah, blah, blah. So I, I went to his stream. He was doing some drunk stream thing, which is cool. But he literally was sitting there for 30 minutes threatening to end the stream early because he wasn't getting enough donations. And when I say 30 minutes, I literally mean 30 minutes straight. He, he kept going on about how he had to like pick up his mom the next day and we weren't even making that much today and there wasn't enough hype in the chat or whatever, you know, it's like, where's all the donations? I haven't been making that many donations, this and that. And I'm, I'm just sitting there like, okay, Dark Side Phil, I, I didn't realize. It was gross. So I told my friend about it and he's like, ah, oh, no, he never does that. He like, he never does that. That was just a one-time thing. He got in a mood or whatever. Try his stream again. I tell you, he, he never does that stuff. And I'm like, okay, you know, some people have bad days. You know, we all do dumb stuff. Maybe he's, maybe he's not complaining about money again. And the next time I join his stream a few weeks later, same exact thing. Oh guys, why aren't we, why aren't we making enough donations? Why is the chat so quiet, guys? The way he acted was borderline manipulative and i remember thinking to myself how how the heck has no one called him out yet like what and then i looked at his view count and i'm like oh 2k viewers that's why outside of the begging he might be like a fantastic streamer and maybe i was just unlucky and the two times i watched him were the only two times he's done that but i don't really want to watch his stream again and i kind of recommend you don't either Next up we have Tide Time. Tide Time has more than earned his place on this tier list because of something I would like to call confirmation bias. Everyone suffers from it, but Tide suffers from it more than most. For, for example, in a lot of his tier list, he places Hag at like the very bottom of the tier list because he's not good at Hag. <laughs> he's not a good Hag and because of that, Hag isn't a good character in his tier list. Back before the Leatherface buff, he would place him really high because he usually killed people with Leatherface because Leatherface is easy and destroys worse players, you know, not the greatest players. Old Leatherface completely just eliminated them. New Leatherface does so too, but um, I haven't seen a tier list from him since the new Leatherface came out. I don't even really think he plays the game. And, and having, you know, really wild opinions or, you know, even really biased opinions is, is okay. And I don't even care about that at all. But one thing that does bug me and bugs a lot of people is he just refuses to listen to like anyone else. He, he'll make an opinion on something. He'll keep that opinion. And regardless of what you say or do or show him, he, he refuses to bend. You know, that opinion is true. He believes Hag is bad. Therefore, Hag is bad, and you can never convince him otherwise under any circumstance. And if you try to argue with him, he'll just dismiss your opinion. He won't even acknowledge it as a possibility. And when people do that, it makes them come off as someone who thinks they're more intelligent than the people around them. And no one really likes dealing with that. Long story short, always be open to criticism, because you can always be wrong. Next up is Marth, and I want to say that if this video was any less perfect, then I would probably place Marth higher because I actually really like watching Marth play games. My big complaint with him though, and the reason why I have to place him lower is he just, he complains way too much. The center of his complaints are normally survivors because at the end of the day, if you have four optimal survivors playing an optimal killer, the optimal survivors should win most of the time. And the game is kind of balanced that way to where survivors do have an advantage. And, and that's okay in my opinion. But it's just every stream, man. For so long when he plays Dead by Daylight, he'll just complain everything's unfair, everything's broken, Killer is just so underpowered. And he'll win most of his games, like he, he wins so much, but it's just not enough. I remember watching his stream and it was just, ah, survivors are, are way too good, 4K. Ah, oh, man, like it's just unfair that they have so many second chance perks, 4K. Ah, man, killers don't really have a chance. 4K, 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 4K. Yes, sometimes 
you are going to run into teams that will beat you regardless of how well you play. Sometimes the maps are unfair. If it was like every other game you were just playing so perfect and like you were losing, sure, but that's not the case. And like, I, I love you, man, but like, bro, you, you gotta chill. <laughs> just try to have more fun with it. It is a video game. Bottom of C tier is gonna be True Talent. He's definitely better than Tide, but he still suffers from similar issues. A good example of this is when he was uh, saying for a while that Wraith is a top 3 killer. And his reasoning for this was legitimately because he didn't play Wraith that much. He started using, you know, a couple perk variations, add-on variations with the killer, and then he was consistently 4 king almost every single game. And in his mind that meant, oh, well, I don't. I haven't played this killer that much. I'm 4 king He's he's top three. When in reality, you're just doing well with the killer. You could point at any killer in the game, you know, and you could point at Clown, and you could consistently get 4Ks with them at whatever ranks, you know. In your mind, you could say Clown's top three. I will give him credit though, because he is at least more willing to debate his thoughts and opinions. But there is something else he does, which is pretty annoying. He'll act like he's being persecuted or people are just dismissing his opinion or this or that. And then he'll do the same thing to other people. When Deathslinger came out and people were saying he's really good, he was just dismissing that opinion. You know, he was doing the thing that he was complaining about people were doing to him. When he said Wraith was, you know, really good top three. But then he'll get really, really, really angry at people for doing that to him. And it, it's kind of hypocritical. I want to eventually make a longer video just focused on True, but this is the really shorthand version of why I think he definitely fits in this spot. It pains me to do this, but Cauliflower absolutely should be in the C tier for the time being. A lot of streamers that stream or make content on Dead by Daylight are kind of game locked to the point where they won't really have a sizable audience if they try to do anything else. So they have to keep playing this game because this is how they make their money. Cauliflower, though, takes the burnout to a whole nother level. The last seven times I've tuned in to watch her play, she is just sitting there, not reacting, with this face of just complete disinterest and boredom. She is done with Dead by Daylight, but she has to keep playing it or she won't make money anymore. It, it's really sad too because she's a really nice person and I've watched her just chatting streams a few times and she seems to not only be enjoying herself but just be generally happier and the chat generally seems to be happier. If she could take like a two or three month break from uh, consistent streaming from Dead by Daylight just not even think about the game touch it and then come back maybe she'll be in a better state of mind and her viewers will go back up. Big chilling in the middle of C tier is Puppers. Uh, his stream is good. I don't see anything wrong with him personally. I think he's a pretty chill dude. Uh, the one complaint I do have about him is he focuses way too much on addressing, you know, toxic people or his haters or, you know, the bad people out there who are really negative to him. And I get it's frustrating constantly having people that are, you know, uh, being disrespectful to you, harassing you, etc. But but the more you kind of address that, the more you create this negative feedback loop where you're addressing the haters. The haters, you know, get attention, so they start harassing you more, and then you continue to address them more, and it creates a negative environment where less people want to watch you play games. At the end of the day, people are going to be people and, and chat's going to be chat. You know, don't worry about white knighting them or anything like that. Just do your own thing and stream. As much as I love watching Monto's YouTube videos, he just seems so annoyed when he's streaming. Like he seems annoyed at the chat. He seems annoyed at the game. He seems annoyed at everyone. My question is, uh, why Monto? <laughs> well, what's, what's bothering you, buddy? Uh, what's, what's up? You, you good, man? At B tier, we got Fungus. He's probably one of the streamers I've watched the least, but from what I've seen, he seems to be a, a very educational streamer. He's probably the best educational streamer out there, actually. 
Even the few times I've gone into his stream, he's been extremely helpful. He's answered a couple questions I've had about the game. He seems like generally an all-around good dude who's good at the game too. That's all you can really ask for. Solid streamer for sure, and I double recommend him if you are new to the game. Another streamer in the same vein of the previous one is Otofu. He's good at the game, he seems to have a very positive attitude when he streams, he's really helpful to new players, and he has a lot of chat interaction. Honestly, he's just the full kit, he's everything you could ever need. The question is, is he everything you want? So Noob3 is up next, and probably more so than anyone else on this list, he's just the best at being absurdly entertaining for no reason. I don't know what it is, but like, I'll find myself just watching his stream way longer than I normally do with most other streamers, and I, I don't know why, he's just naturally a really entertaining dude. He's kind of funny, he's insanely good at Survivor, and he just, I don't know man. <laughs> And a lot of other people probably feel the same way, because when he streams, he usually is getting close to 10k viewers throughout the whole stream. Quote, when he streams, he kind of just doesn't stream because he really is sick of the game. <laughs> and I, I, like I said, I don't blame him, and I hope these breaks will actually make him want to come back to the game, but if not, I understand. I'll just uh, stay and beat here. Uh, next up is Umbra. Probably one of, if not the best Huntress players in the game hands down, absolutely insane at Huntress, chill for the most part, an absolute meme lord which is a plus, and is probably the biggest consistent Dead by Daylight streamer right now, which I think she absolutely deserves. As an added bonus when I made fun of her for having a, in my opinion, a stupid opinion on something, she was respectful. She could have definitely freaked out and, you know, been like, ah, oh, you're so toxic, blah blah blah, but she just went along with the joke, and it's nice to see, because a lot of content creators can't really take jokes at the end of the day, so yeah, uh, I appreciate that. There's just one thing though. The bigger your audience is, the more careful you have to be when it comes to shaming people or praising people, because with the bigger your audience, the more followers you have that'll just do whatever you say, and the more love or hate someone will get based on what you say. This goes doubly at, for you being a content creator, and I feel like when it came to the situation between you and Monto, you could have handled that a lot better. Monto said something that was not that huge of a deal and was honestly his opinion, and for you to send a tweet that sent a lot of extra hate from your fans his way, you, you could have possibly gotten his career ended. Seeing your position, it would have been very easy for you to get a hold of Monto's contact information, see whether or not what he said was intentionally harmful, and then try to educate him on why he shouldn't think that way. And I feel like that would have been a lot better for you to do. You can say that it's not your job to educate, but if you want people to see things your way, it, it definitely is. Vilifying someone should be the last thing you do especially when you have the power to do otherwise, and I feel like you didn't handle that very well at all. Great streamer regardless. If you're ever in town, hit me up so we can fuck. All right, so next up on the list, bottom of A tier and the newest up and comer, probably one of the biggest channels you guys should be subbing to right now. Uh, this guy named uh, Drift or Drifting One, excellent YouTuber, great content, absolutely sexy he has a twitch and you know normally i wouldn't do this but i'll link his twitch in the description too turns out tomorrow the the day after this video comes out he's actually going to be streaming the new risk of rain update as well 1.0 so you should definitely check that out uh because this guy man his twitch streams are top notch honestly if you're not watching his content you're missing out because he is quite literally the most amazing thing that has ever happened ever like just period i managed to uh ask him for a photo and he sent me this this is actually a photo of him um from maybe two hours ago quite a quite the individual i must say next up on the tier list is zubat once again and insanely good at the game always willing to debate and talk with the viewers about different perks and killers and his thoughts 
and has a really sarcastic attitude, which I find absolutely hilarious. But probably the best thing about Zubat is he doesn't talk that much. A lot of streamers are always trying to fill in the open air with commentary that doesn't really do anything. Uh, Zubat kind of does it differently. If there's something to say, he'll say it. Otherwise, he'll just play the game. If you're looking for someone who's just gonna, you know, occasionally comment and play the game and play it well, you're just looking for some gameplay, you should definitely check out his stream. At the top of A tier and the second highest on the list is Otz. And I must say that this guy is so kind, it doesn't make sense. He's probably the kindest person I've never met. Like, he, he's always being really respectful, even when people are being rude to him first. So he's an extremely patient dude. He's always, you know, trying to improve people's moods. He seems like, honestly, just a really good guy. And it's just, it's kind of weird. <laughs> like, I just, I almost feel like he should be angry sometimes, and he isn't. But at the same time, it's probably one of the reasons why he's so popular, and he deserves every last bit of it. Even more so, he plays every single killer, and he uses different builds constantly trying to experiment and find new opportunities. He's probably one of the best trappers as well in the game. Might even be the best, I'm not sure. Let's all be real here, he's just way too good for this community and we don't deserve him. But he's here, so please, like, watch this guy. Alright, let's be real, none of these other streamers had a chance. The best streamer, absolutely most entertaining, highest quality, greatest ever. It's our boy Scott John. I mean, honestly, why haven't you given him all your money? Like, just go to his stream and give him your credit card, uh, your bank account information. Like, honestly, he's he's just perfect. And you just gotta give him everything, dude. And my tier list is perfect, so you can't even argue with me. Like, don't at me. This is absolutely perfect. Just how it should be. Call me Thanos. 